Black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. Oh, it's been a minute since we've been in a whip ski. Hello, dear. Did you miss me? This little bitch getting frisky. <laughs> Montanas, let's do it. Montanas. Get out your daisy dukes and your boots and your plants and come down and get a plate of ribs. All right, y'all, what up? Back in the whip, uh, racing against the uh, daylight again. It's pretty uh, dark in the sky, so who knows how good this is gonna be for lighting, but we're just gonna try it anyways. Montana's. Uh, not sure if it's exclusive to Canuck land, but uh, I think it might be. Anyhow, been a staple in, in where I live forever. Actually, funny story is the college that I went to for like a year is actually right there and one of my classmates uh his dad actually opened this and we used to get fried <laughs> at class and then come here and his we would just get hooked up so shout out to that that was dope uh not the case today had to pay for this of course which i'm fine with uh and what is that that we have well i was just craving a very simple chicken tenders and fries now this isn't actually the first place that i went to today to try to to get this uh, i went to another spot in a hotel called chicago joe's which has these banging ass like amazing mustard beer batter fried with a honey dill dip uh chicken tenders but due to increased covid concerns they've shut down so i find myself at montana's you know, getting this crave figured out. So, I can't wait to get into it. I'm very, very hungry. Just got myself a water from Timmy Ho's and also your man fucked around and got a dessert for himself. Just a nice little cloudy donut dessert, but we won't show you which one until we get there. So, let's get into this. I got some ranch, of course. I got a couple packs of ketchup, some wipes. Good for the COVID season and a little Montana's a barbecue and bar uh, gravy for my fries. So let's crack this biatch open and see what we got steaming in here. She's nice and hot, 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 hot. So chicken tendies, seasoned fries, thumbnail. Call me wild and crazy, but I specifically am just out and about in my vehicle to cruise around and listen to this new Kid Cudi album. Mm -hmm. That's a good fry, that's a good gravy. Um, I just saw that it dropped and in my personal opinion, the best way to take in music in general, more specifically, a new album of an artist that you really have liked over the years, which I've loved Kid Cudi over the years. Is to bang it on a vehicle system. In my opinion, there's really no better way. It's very personal. You feel very surrounded by it. It bangs hard. You cruise. You just enjoy yourself. And the experience. It's better even when it's darker at night. If I'm being real honest. Mmm, you are hot. So that's what I was out doing. And before I pop in home, I of course wanted to just grab something to eat real quick. And these tenders were on the, well, not these ones specifically, but chicken tenders in general were on the mind. Mm, these are good though. Very tender. Mm. Mm. 
So it's his third follow-up album to Man on the Moon. For those in my audience who who watch or listen to him, you'll know. And I haven't got through the full thing yet. There's 18 songs. That's a lot of fucking songs. But it's been a long time since Man on the Moon 2, so understand why he would have a shit ton of material so far it's pretty disappointing um i'd say the instrumentation the uh the beats are cool they're definitely the part that's standing out the most beyond his his you know his flows his melodies his lyrical content uh, his vocals whoever engineered his vocals didn't do a very good job in my opinion thus far that I can tell they're just kind of muddy I just get lost in the mix um, so a little we'll see the other thing this is the thing with, with Kid Cudi and he's done this to me time and time again in the past is he's a, he's a grower not a shower He's one of those artists where you listen to his album the first time and you're like, eh. And then you just like vibe with it. And slowly but surely, it starts to become addictive. Right? So that happened with me with his other two, The Man on the Moon and Man on the Moon 2. Man on the Moon, the original one, was like, everybody claims, like, oh, boom, it was classic. The second one came out. And that one, to me, was, like, at first, strange to take in. Like, it, it didn't hit right away. But over time, that shit grew on me hard. And I think that second album, Man on the Moon 2, is his best work to date. I was also vibing that album in a very... like specifically weird time in my life. So I think I might've appreciated it more because of that, but I had just moved to Toronto. And I think that album came out like right after that. And I was in school for sound engineering. And uh, I used to walk to and from school like 20 minutes each way every day. And I just would vibe out that album, but it's a pretty dark, pretty sad type album. And I was like dark and sad at the time, like very dark and sad. Crazy. Anxiety and panic attacks. Like I was, I was new to anxiety and panic. And I didn't know, I just hadn't, I didn't have it figured out yet. I was just in the very start of that. And I was like, new city, no friends. Like in a bad place in my head, like very depressed. Just trying to make it. 
through life and the weird part about that album was it both drove me to like almost kill myself because it was so like dark like it was almost depressing to listen to like it almost made me worse in a sense at the time But at the same time, the the fact that it, it it what was expressed in that album was so in line with what I was feeling at the time, it also like saved me because it just felt like like a connection point, like a less lonely type thing. Like it's like oh like other people are all fucked up too. And you know, on this record, this is a lot of expression of that fucked upness and like, you know, just the old standard, like you're not alone in this type shit. So it kind of helped me in that way too. But that album was definitely very influential in me not fucking killing myself at the time. Real shit. I was in a bad way back then. I, uh, it was crazy to think back to those times and think back to my, my mental state and now I know that it was it was the inexperience of not the not knowingness of what like anxiety and panic and these attacks and not knowing what the shit was like when it's brand new and you don't know it like you've never dealt with it and it feels so foreign to you and you literally think like you're going crazy it just takes time to like learn how to, how to like accept it then beat it and then like manage it but eventually like I struggled with it for a long time eventually though once you exist with it for long enough and you figure it out, the, the experience with it makes it so you can get over it because you learn and you understand what's causing it, where it's coming from, how to mitigate that, how to take proactive steps to like not be doing things that would promote it to happen <clears throat> and also you finally learn to beat like irrational fears you know by the by the 2000th time that you thought you were going to keel over and die or pass out and die or heart attack and die or whatever your your thing is by the 2000th time that happens and you come out alive and then you're fine, you finally just are able to convince yourself back into rational, like living, like, ah, I'm fine. Like there's nothing, there's actually nothing to worry about. And even if I do worry, I can't control shit anyways, you know? If I'm gonna, if my body's gonna fail me right now, it's gonna fail me right now. And that's fine. Like I have to understand that I have no power over that. Because the thing with anxiety and panic and shit like that, I it's just really a lot of it is about control and not having any control and feeling like you want to have control, but you have to accept that you, you don't have control and you can't control it and you just have to let it be what it is 
So that was my headspace back then. And for a long time, like all through my 20s. Really. If I really think about it. And uh, that Kid Cudi album was helpful at the time, but also kind of like made me worse in a sense. Double-edged sword. It's so crazy to think that this third album is coming out in 2020 and like that was already like a decade ago that his last that last album was though so that's what a long gap but yeah over time he's dropped some other projects and and uh just some random song some random music and i feel like just somewhere along the way, he lost the so his sauce. Like it's not just not the same anymore. He just doesn't. I don't know. It's like it's almost like he he only had so much to draw from in his life up until that point, and then once he became you know rich and famous and known, and it's like it's you. It's hard to make that first time genuine authentic art again because your life is not as plagued or as difficult anymore or you have less shit to draw from I feel like because before you you make your first couple albums you have like your whole life story and everything to just draw from that but then once that's out and now you have this pressure to make this next thing it's like you know, you, you don't have that same quality of experience from before that draws people in the same, I feel like. So that's what this album is feeling like to me. I feel like it's it's tonally, like, pretty cool so far. But, like I said, his content, like, his, vocal, and his vocals and everything, just his melodies, it doesn't seem like it's there. Which bums me out, it's unfortunate. But he has the golden voice when it comes to, like, the, like the hums and the mmms and that. So, anyways, I'll take the rest in and I'll, I'll, I'll vibe with it. I'm sure some of it will grow on me, but as of now, first listens. Ay, ay, ay. You know? I totally forgot we're supposed to eat this donut, or at least show you this donut and have a bite or two. This is just a nice honey dip donut. And uh, it's definitely in my top three fads. Mm -hmm. Not as good as a Krispy Kreme, obviously. So good though. Nice and airy, sweet, sugary, a little dense. For honey dip, I gotta say, I do love, like, the engineering of a Krispy Kreme is just next level. Literally just melt in your mouth. But once again, I don't have access to good stuff like that. And this guy literally just cut across the front of my vehicle in a parking lot so close like he was just gonna hit me when there's still there's literally a hundred feet in front of me and he had to cut right the fuck right in front of my truck okay anyhow now we go peace black hoodie i'm back cooking these goodies look at these views from cooking these foods yeah Black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah.